In this video, we're going to look at how to solve higher order equations that can be reduced to a quadratic equation. For our first example, we're going to solve x to the 4 minus 13x squared plus 36 is equal to 0. This is an equation of degree 4. In order to reduce it to a quadratic equation, we want to recognize that this term x to the 4 can also be rewritten as x squared or squared using the index law. Using this trick, we can now rewrite this entire equation as x squared or squared minus 13x squared plus 36 is equal to 0. Our next step now is to introduce the variable u. We're going to say let u equal to x squared and we're going to replace all these x squared terms with u so that we have a quadratic equation u squared minus 13u plus 36 is equal to 0. This is a monoquadratic equation which we can solve using the PSF method. So we're going to look for two numbers a and b that multiplies to give the constant term 36 and the two numbers a and b also needs to add to give the coefficient of u which is negative 13. The two numbers that would satisfy both of these conditions are if a is equal to negative 4 and if b is negative 9. Since negative 4 times negative 9 is 36 and negative 4 plus negative 9 is negative 13. Once we have these numbers, we can factorize this quadratic into u minus 4 times u minus 9 is equal to 0. Next, in order to solve this quadratic, we use the null factor law. For these two factors to multiply to give 0, we either have u minus 4 is equal to 0 or u minus 9 is equal to 0, or both can be equal to 0. If u minus 4 is equal to 0, we make the substitution x squared and we get x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. And when we solve for x by adding 4 to both sides and taking the square root, we're going to get x is equal to plus or minus 2. Remember, we need to take both the positive and negative answers when we take the square root. If u minus 9 is equal to 0, then we have x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. And same thing, we add 9 to both sides so that x squared is equal to 9. And when we take the square root, we can get x is equal to plus or minus 3. So we've got four solutions, x is equal to plus minus 2 or plus minus 3. So why do we get four solutions when we solve this quartic equation? Well, any time you solve an equation like this, you're essentially solving simultaneous equations. For this example, we are solving the simultaneous equation between y is equal to x to the 4 minus 13x squared plus 36 and the line y is equal to 0, which is essentially the x-axis. If we look at the graphs, this quartic graph intersects the x-axis at four locations, minus 3, minus 2, 2, and 3. Since there are four points of intersection, there are four solutions, and these points of intersection correspond to our solutions. x is equal to plus minus 2, and x is equal to plus minus 3. Let's look at another similar example. This time we're going to solve 4x to the 4 minus 5x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. This is again a degree 4 equation, but we can reduce it to a quadratic by recognizing that x to the 4 can be rewritten as x squared or squared using the index law. So using this trick, we can rewrite the equation as 4 times x squared or squared minus 5x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. Next, we're going to introduce the variable u and we're going to say let u equal to x squared. And we're going to replace all these x squared terms with u so that we have a quadratic equation. 4u squared minus 5u minus 9 is equal to 0. This is slightly different to our first example because we now have a non-monic quadratic. We can again solve using the PSF method. So first we're going to find two numbers a and b that multiplies to give the product of the coefficient of u squared and the constant 4 times negative 9 which is negative 36. 
The two numbers a and b needs to also add to give the coefficient of u, which is negative 5. So two numbers that will satisfy both of these conditions would be if a is equal to negative 9 and if b is equal to 4. Once we have got these two numbers, we then break up the negative 5u into 4u minus 9u. And we're going to proceed by factorizing using grouping in pairs technique. So for the first pair, we've got 4u squared plus 4u. It has got 4u as the common factor. So we take that out and we get 4u times u plus 1. Our second pair, we've got minus 9u minus 9. It's got negative 9 as our common factor. So we take that out and we get minus 9 times u plus 1. And all of this is still equal to 0. The u plus 1 is our common factor now. So this factorizes to 4u minus 9 times u plus 1 is equal to 0. And to solve for this, we again use the null factor law. In order for this expression to be equal to 0, we either have 4u minus 9 is equal to 0 or u plus 1 is equal to 0. If 4u minus 9 is equal to 0, we make the substitution u is equal to x squared, so we have 4x squared minus 9 is equal to 0, which means x squared is equal to 9 on 4. And we take the square root of both sides, remembering to take the plus and the minus solutions, and we're going to get x is equal to plus or minus 3 on 2. For u plus 1 is equal to 0, again, we replace a u with x squared, and we have got x squared is equal to negative 1. Now, is it possible for x squared to equal to negative 1? No, because if x is a real number, then the square of a real number will always be positive. Since x squared cannot equal to negative 1, this means that this produces no real solution. And so we only have two solutions for x, which are plus and minus 3 on 2. To understand this again, let's look at the simultaneous equations we're solving. We are solving the simultaneous equations y is equal to 4x to the 4 minus 5x squared minus 9 and the equation y is equal to 0, which is the x-axis. So if we now look at the graphs, we've got a quartic graph and the x-axis, but this time our quartic graph only intersects the x-axis at two points, negative 1.5 and 1.5. And this corresponds to our two solutions of x is equal to plus and minus 3 on 2. Thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you guys found that useful. In our next video, we're going to look at more examples of how to use this technique, but for different powers of x. So don't forget to subscribe. We hope to see you all in the next one. Bye for now.